Good evening and welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Our guest tonight is Martí Sánchez Fila, Professor of Neurorobotics and Artificial Intelligence with Barcelona's University Pompeo Fabra. As technology continues to evolve and call into question our links to machines, blending the line between what we create and what we control, key fields such as artificial intelligence and neurorobotics are increasingly guiding our choices. Professor Fibla is here to help us make sense of this fascinating world of man, machine, and art. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for the invitation. It's a fascinating, not only one field, but a convergence of fields, which go from studying what our brains do, what we can understand of what our brains do, to then how machines work. So why, what interested you in, in not only understanding how our minds work, but how to apply that to something else? Yeah, well, in fact, the, the, my interest starting uh, with computers when, when I was young, and, and this is what really drive my, my aims at, at the beginning and of my research career. I did uh, computer science. Okay. And then it was later on that uh, while working at, uh, at Specs, a uh, uh, laboratory uh, in, uh, in Barcelona, uh, that they, they are very interdisciplinary, that I got a bit more into neuroscience and the brain. And so the machine led you to the human. Yes. <laughs> it, was a, it was in fact, yeah, the, yes, some kind of, of magic behind computers. When, when uh, I'm 40 years old, so the first computers were starting to, to, be, uh, to be able to be bought at home. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I got fascinated by, by this and programming since very young. And have, I mean, obviously, you're, you learn something new every day within this field because it's such a complicated thing. Yeah. But why specifically choosing to apply this to, to machines, to robots in particular, to robotics? Yeah, well, in fact, I, I got uh, aware of a, an important question that intelligence as, as we know it mm -hmm. cannot develop uh, outside the body. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. You, you, mm -hmm. need, you need to give the, the machine data sets, labeled data sets of... of of things that it can learn, but this this will never be enough to, to get intelligence as, as we know it, because we need a body to interact with the world and to know the consequences of the actions that we can do. Yeah. So we, we need robotics. We need robotics to understand the brain or simulations of very good simulations of the body mm -hmm. inside the computer, which is now one of the, the paths that is more following because robots are very hard to program mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, they they break, they are costly, and uh, for, for research, uh, I mean, it's a difficult field. It's a difficult field. So you speak of in developing intelligence outside of the body. So this idea of artificial intelligence, the term AI is really, really commonly used, especially given where we are here, mm -hmm. the tech center, which is around us, which is the key word has always been mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. What exactly is artificial intelligence? What point have we gotten to with it in terms of its applicability? Artificial intelligence, it's, it's a very big uh, frame umbrella mm -hmm. for, for all lots of now very specialized uh, directions and sciences. So we have machine learning in, mm -hmm. in, in, as inside artificial intelligence, which, which deal with making mm, machines learn. learn. Learn with a teacher, with a supervised learning, learn completely autonomously, mm -hmm. like unsupervised learning, or the, the, the other type of learning that is called reinforcement, like okay. uh, learning by a faint signal re of reward that uh, shapes your action. Okay. So we have these mainly three types inside uh, machine learning. So it's complex, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's getting complex, and every field is advancing uh, by its necessities. Uh, I would say, for example, supervised learning and machine learning is now being widely applied uh, to data sciences and, okay. and massively treating uh, these big amounts of data that we have with mm -hmm. our mobile phones, with our mobility data in the cities, and well, there's, there's a huge field there. Mm -hmm. Then uh, reinforcement learning, for example, is uh, applied to action, so robotics is a good, a good application yeah. domain, and, and we are at the starting point. So mm -hmm. I, we have robots at home, we, but, but they, they, are, they, they clean the, the, the floor and, 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 and so I'm like, sure they love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> if not, they could be programmed to, to love that. Yeah. <laughs> possibly, possibly. But they, they, they work on very restricted environments. Mm -hmm. So uh, kitchen ro robotics mm -hmm. maybe is, is, is a field that is now quite hot. And um, I mean, it, it will take years yeah. to, to, to be able to do the manipulations that we do on the kitchen. Um, 
So, so th there's a long path to, to go. And, and this is the one driven by, by industrial applications. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm more a bit on the research side. Okay. So I'm trying to understand how these basic processes are happening in the brain. Okay. So in terms of this guy here, mm -hmm. um, could you say that he is equipped with artificial intelligence? Does he have a brain inside of that head? It, so in the disciplines of computer vision, mm -hmm. uh, inside of artificial intelligence or speech recognition, uh, of course. So all these subsets of, of uh, applications, trying to understand what we see, try to uh, understand one, what we hear, uh, of course, it has artificial intelligence mm -hmm. because it can see and it can hear and understand basic words. Uh, the problem is at which level. So mm -hmm. it's, it's only processing so stimulus and, and producing some, some outputs. So it has some mappings mm -hmm. learned inside. It, it's not able to understand anything uh, beyond that. So, so it would receive a certain stimulus. And like an image? It would pull from a list of possible responses. Uh, right Something now, Something like that, or? Yes. Uh, right now, its behavior is mostly like that. Okay. It, 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 it processes an image from its cameras. Uh, the now robot from uh, Aldebaran Robotics, now SoftBank in Japan. Mm -hmm. It has two cameras, so uh, it processes this image coming from these cameras, and if it, if it see faces, mm -hmm. it very quickly responds to them. Okay. Uh, for example, um, of course, this, this is artificial intelligence. This is computer vision. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, I mean, there's a long way to go. There's, I want to get back to this because you have a very, very interesting field that you study in and especially the work that you're doing within Soko. But we want to go to, we'll go to that first. You chose to do something very unique in which you're taking the, the mapping of the brain applied to robotics and then you're using it to make art. Hmm. So through your, um, through the Tietronica project in which mm -hmm. you have robots literally acting out scenes and, um, and complex scenes, also things that are, that are deep in terms of the content. It's not merely, hi, I'm a robot, so am I. Uh, why did you choose to, to do that, to pursue that project? Because it's very unique. Okay, so I, I was working uh, in art like, uh, since kind of the beginning of, where, of the degree when I was doing computer science. I, I, I was in a theater company dealing with um, with uh, visuals and real-time, like uh, filmmaking, in, in, okay. in, in a, with, a, with a, theater, a theater company that is called Agrupación Señor Serrano, and uh, I had this this like divided brain among arts and, and science, mm -hmm. and uh, Teatronica, which is a project in which we bring robotics closer to arts and. Um, we try to, well, the, in practical terms, we do theater with robots. Mm -hmm. uh, so I manage a bit to join my, my two sides. And, and this is why is the, the project that survived, mm -hmm. in, because I'm, I'm trying to do a research career. So I could not be very far away uh, to two to artistic sides. Yes. So I needed something that was in between, and Teatronica was perfect. Okay. So, and it's a good challenge, because uh, uh, these, these robots in particular, they play football every year in the Robo Cup. So why not uh, doing theater? It's also a very interesting field in which um, very high level cognitive abilities are required mm -hmm. to, to improvise. Uh, every robot can read text now, yes. but uh, how to put emotions into that, how mm -hmm. to um, do the correct poses, how to sense your surroundings, how to react to the public, mm -hmm. how to react with your co-actors. Um, so no, amazing questions that, that, I mean, can be applied. Of course, I still didn't <laughs> be able to, to do research with, with Theatronica. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, for the moment, performing little pieces. Well, you've, you've done research in order to be able to create the pieces, though. Uh, the yes, but I, I must say it's a, a very engineering kind of approach. So yes. I, I, I build a system mm -hmm. to, for the robots to be able to perceive each other. So the minimum system mm -hmm. to be able to, to implement a script. Okay. So that... that the location, the, distance from objects. Yeah, like you know, among them. Thing. So placing in the, in the, um, in the stage, mm -hmm. you know, relative positioning. And, uh, and then gestures, uh, the maximum emotion expression that, that, that I could, like with the LEDs that and the robots have, and the it's movements of the head. Right now, right. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, 
Movement of the head is very mm -hmm. important, like uh, small movements will, will express a lot of emotions. And uh, to use this, this, these things like minimally to, to be able to perform some species, uh, being able to communicate something yeah. like uh, to the public. And, and it communicates. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been amazed in some audiences. Uh, we, we've done it twice uh, until now. Uh, we, we prepared a small show. And uh, I mean, it really communicates emotions. It's, it's amazing because you're, you should go and write a book on acting mm -hmm. after this because if you're teaching a robot, you're not teaching the robot how to act, you are the act, because an actor mm. when they're on set, they're meant to know how to do, you know, to turn here, to have this expression, to do this with their arm. But you have to script that out for a robot. Yes. So, so that, that also goes back to the studies that you do on, on how people think, how they interact with each other. And, and that, that led you to specs, right? Synthetic, perceptive, emotive, and cognitive. Well, in, in fact, uh, Theatronica, I, 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 I conceive it inside specs, okay. because I spent a lot of years in this, in this lab, uh, nearly 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it was first a bit the question about the brain and how the brain works. I was doing uh, theater at the moment uh, with, with this company. <laughs> and, uh, theater to neuroscience, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was just to, to keep up with you know, the hard work of science, you need other, other inputs. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, then, and then Theatronica came along a bit some years later. Okay. So this a bit was the, was the timeline. And, uh, and now with, with some more recent projects, it's true that uh, Theatronica drove a lot of interesting questions, mm -hmm. like uh, synchronization among the robots, uh, what is the, the, um, the basis of, of entrainment between people while, while we talk, all the stimulus that you need to, to be attentive to, to mm -hmm. be able to, to... We are talking and we are not um, interfering each other. We, 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 t we take perfect turns mm -hmm. and, um, and it works. No? Yeah. And this is not easy. <laughs> Now, we were talking before about, uh, in particular, you, you focused a lot of, is it on the hippocampus? I, I, the cere the cerebellum. I did a project, an European project yeah. in, uh, in hippocampus, yes, mm -hmm. uh, rats hippocampus. Okay. And how this uh, inner part of the brain um, has some particular uh, neurons mm -hmm. that fire when we are in particular locations okay. of, of the world. So they, they are kind of site specific mm -hmm. and they are uh, these are called play cells they okay. are other ones that are called grid cells in which they are establish a metric of the space um, really? so you enter in a new space that is unknown and oh. already the grid cells will fire on an hexagonal pattern okay so this has uh, driven a lot of inspiration for for models mm -hmm. and how to um, how to make a robot that can only perceive an, an image of the of the room in which it is in and, and start like localizing himself in this room. No? Mm -hmm. So th there are on the other side, robotics has its own methods like self-localization and mapping, SLAM it's called. A bit more in an engineering approach. Mm -hmm. But then we start to know how the brain does it through the hippocampus. Well, we know that these neurons fire, but we don't exactly know how, who is causing the firing and, and how they are okay. formed. We, we know how they are reinforced during sleep. We, we know a lot of things. So there's, there's many, many experiments. Science is, is getting a, a real boost uh, mm -hmm. recently in neuroscience, uh, among others, because there are better and better techniques to access the brain. But, but th these are two different paths, no? so the engineering path and the neuroscience path. And, and we are very far to really understand the processes behind the hippocampus to really, we, we, do, we do small steps. No? Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden we discover that there are some cells also that fire in, in um, corners, in uh, bifurcation, some processes that uh, gets us to um, sample what can happen when you get into a decision point, mm -hmm. like, oh, I could go there, I could go there, um, and how this so works. So we can, we can blame it on our neurons for making bad decisions. Yes, yes, of <laughs> course, of course, because there's, there's some anticipatory kind of uh, responses already that is happening before even we have conscious access. So yeah, we, we spoke about that a little bit before, mm. before the show. So there, we're actually reacting to things before they happen. Yes. In and, a sense. And, and this is a particular um, like feature of, of, the, uh, of the brain, of the cerebellum, this, mm -hmm. this, this uh, small brain that we have on the back that has half of the neurons of, of the brain because they are smaller. And uh, it's, it's building an, 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 a, a world, a state of the world that is a bit ahead in time. So it's predicting uh, some milliseconds ahead. 
so that we can act with a proper um, understanding of what is happening and a proper sense of, of reality and being uh, really like on, on time, mm -hmm. like on with things. And not with delays, because the, the sensors uh, have delays. So an image gets into, into the retina and it gets processed and this goes through the neurons and um, the thalamus, the V1 area, and, and it, it, this, uh, this takes some seconds, mm -hmm. uh, milliseconds, sorry. But so, are our responses always correct? Uh, the, the response, uh, correct, I mean, it, it's difficult to define yeah, what is yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if we hear, if we feel something unexpected, mm -hmm. then there are other processes to deal with the unexpected and drive attention to that mm -hmm. and then take over. Okay. So, I mean, our, our response is what it has to be, I yeah. don't know, somehow. Yeah. Okay, okay, so we're defining the future by the, res by the anticipation. Yes. In a way. <laughs> we could see that. Um, so you'd, you'd moved past specs, mm -hmm. and uh, as an independent researcher, and you're working on the InSoco project, which, which also involved some of this. So this is modeling the social behavior of individuals and then applying this model to robotics. Mm. That sounds easy. Uh, <laughs> so how, what, is, what did you find to be the most dip difficult aspect in terms of conceptualizing that? Um, is it people's personality? Is it how they interact within a certain social environment? Is it all of that? Hmm. So I, I'm dealing with, with much more simpler questions there. Imagine simple uh, situations in which two people uh, have to carry a piece of furniture mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and all that is happening there, like in this small scene, mm -hmm. like you are trying to, to solve your, the problem by itself, looking at your position. You are trying to sense the, the other. Is, is everything going OK? Uh, you have a common goal. Mm -hmm. You have to stick to that common goal and, and solve it together. There's a lot of things ha happening in, the, in terms of brain. You know, that, mm -hmm. that can be an example uh, of, of minimal complex social behavior. You know? Th there's many, many other examples eh, of, of, like, uh, of things that we do together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, so dealing with each of his aspects, uh, like predicting the goals that the other person has, th these are a bit the aspects that, that interest. And, and, and that in, in these fields, we try to kind of define a minimal setting in which we can answer some questions. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, predicting the, the, the aim of the other. Yes. So to, to be able to, to do something. If, if the task is cooperative, like the one I described, it's okay, but it could be competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you want to get to one place because there's some reward, but uh, oh, the other is closer than you, so okay, I'm not going there because the other will take it. I think he's going there, yes, so I'm predicting. So mm -hmm. all, all, the, all these kinds of, of stuff. No? So like in the, the brain is doing a lot of stuff together and it involves like being sure that we that we are in a correct and a stable position, and also looking at our peers and 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 predicting its intentions, mm -hmm. and also working with that in mind. So, so yes, a lot. it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of in, things. In That's terms of things. our social model, obviously the competitive mo competitiveness model has been what's driven our continued evolution, survival, Darwinian mm. theory, etc. Yeah, is it? This is much more ethically speaking than necessarily data driven. Is it in our best interest to teach robots to be competitive? So, I'll, so for example, if you if you define an environment mm -hmm. in which there's some reward, yeah. and then you define selfish individual agents that need to com that need to extract the maximum of this reward to survive, mm -hmm. you 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 can like study, and this, these are some questions that I'm interested in, uh, like recently, how they, they can be more fair. Okay. Like, so to, to, to like, to drive uh, its, its learning mm -hmm. to the fact that they, they can achieve fairness among them, that, that it's not the case that one takes all and the other nothing. Yeah. And uh, in, in a recent paper, uh, for example, that we, that we are uh, going to present, um, some, in some cases, if you are aware of the reward that the other is, uh, is earning, mm -hmm. somehow this drives a, a fighting behavior of the agents okay. and, and, and it enforces uh, fairness in a kind of distributed way okay. without any centralized control. 
It enforces fairness. Yes, exactly. Okay. So if, imagine that, uh, I mean, I put the example that this is more easy to understand in a company. If, if all the salaries, the, um, the, uh, the extra payoffs mm -hmm. uh, were completely like uh, <laughs> publicized yeah. and, uh, and uh, available to everybody, mm -hmm. this somehow would enforce uh, a kind of of, of fairness among among okay. the among everybody because you 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 gonna fight why if the other got this I mean I, I worked as much as him and what yeah. is happening so in in a simple like multi agent model mm -hmm. we we've been able to prove this this is called loss aversion this is uh, well long known in in economics mm -hmm. we, are, we are not discovering anything here but but it's interesting to apply it into massive multi-agent simulations, which yeah. economics uh, still didn't do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's doing right, uh, right now. This, this is uh, going also quite massive, and uh, uh, a lot of interest in economics also is, is happening. But, but uh, it's, it's an interesting direction also to join like artificial intelligence and machine learning mm -hmm. to be able to make predictions of, of complex dynamics in yeah. complex environments that, that economics al always simplified mm -hmm. right? with the rational thinking of the agents being able to. So it, it, it has also an interesting field. Uh, are, are you currently much. buying stocks or? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but I'm really interested in, in how to enforce rules mm -hmm. that will make this a better world. Yeah. Uh, like, I've been thinking a lot of uh, externalities. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a concept like like some bad side effects yeah. that are generated by our uh, economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, transactions. Yeah. So, Pollution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> among among yeah. other. So how we could minimize this? Mm -hmm. So this 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 uh, applied into into multi-agent simulations, it's, it's also an interesting problem. Okay, yeah. well that's fascinating. Um, I don't know all the research that you're doing, mm. basically, as it's the more that I ask, mm. the more I see it's just mm. the tip of the iceberg. Mm. What have you found that's been one of the most fascinating things to work on so far within, within the various fields that you're involved in? So I, I would take the example of, of these um, multi-agent simulations also because the brain, so before I said that the brain would not develop uh, with the body, mm -hmm. but it happens the same with the others, so okay. the other, the others boost our yeah. our brain, and, and and it's challenging all the time. So this this is this is my, like making a, an arm race that that gets complexity rise in our brains. No, and the more challenging the environment you are born, maybe I mean you you, you had specialized to that kind of intelligence. I mean because intelligence there are many 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 types. Mm -hmm. So being able to start with, with these um, AI like learning algorithms that, that the reinforcement learning, I would say specifically that they are starting to, to get so, so, so like um, performant, uh, to start to, to put agents together mm -hmm. and see how they can promote each other to these uh, higher levels of, of, of uh, like, <laughs> I would not to call it intelligence, but the uh, higher levels of, of uh, yeah, cognition, I don't know how to say it, mm -hmm. but th this is really fascinating. So, so uh, theoretically you could have, you could put in this case two agents, a human and a robot together. Even, a even only hu uh, computer agents. Okay. Only computer agents, okay. fascinating things happen. I'm gonna yeah. talk about uh, a recent, it was one month ago, mm -hmm. I think it was published by OpenAI, the, the, yeah. the yeah. research company, well, I don't know if it's a research company of Elon Musk, yeah. uh, that he has many other, but uh, so they are dealing mostly with reinforcement learning in, in this company. And uh, they published uh, the results on, um, they call it the hide and seek task. So okay. these, are, these are two groups of agents that are placed in an environment uh, and ones need to hide and while, the, while they hide, the seekers cannot see, cannot move. Yeah. Then a point arrives into the seekers, get on, and they have to find uh, the hiders. Okay. And uh, they, they place some, some objects in the environment, and they just equip them with, um, with some reinforcement learning uh, algorithm mm -hmm. that also takes in, into account the current state and has some memory. Okay. And it starts to like, um, improve uh, for reward. Mm -hmm. They want to get more rewards, so of course. The seekers get more reward if they find the hiders, and mm -hmm. the hiders get more reward if they are not found. Mm -hmm. Only with this simple reward uh, kind of shaping of this task, 
uh, you let in, in several computers with lots of computing power, this is the only problem uh, that you need a lot of resources, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you let them for a week, oh, like playing, okay. playing among each other with different teams, and you see the behaviors that they generate are amazing. For example, they take some walls, they build a small shelter, mm -hmm. and they are completely away from the from the seekers. Okay. Then there, there's there's one ramp object in the environment. You, you can see the videos. So it's really nice. And then the seekers learn to use this ramp to jump and and see the the hiders. Mm -hmm. And then the seekers learn to build a shelter that takes in the ramp mm -hmm. inside inside the shelter so that they cannot use it. Yeah. Of course. This is amazing. I mean, all these uh, developed behaviors come only driven by, by but we can ask ourselves, I mean, these, these agents are, are they like in understanding, intelligent? I mean, they quite react to some state in which yeah. they, are, they are in. Yeah, the stimuli. Yeah, the okay. stimuli plus the, some memory. Yeah. But, I mean, you could, you could not ask them like, um, for example, why are you hiding this ramp? Uh, do you... Be, they don't know that the others kind of gonna use it. Okay. They 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 kind of have it compressed in their in their history, and they they have a mapping that mm -hmm. tells them what to do in every situation with a memory and what is the best action to do. But a, a long way is lacking. Yeah. So to un, to really understanding the scene. So also uh, uh, there's some AIs that learn to play games, mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah, seen a lot of that. and and they don't understand the game. So you, you they can improve it the game, but they, they don't. They, they can play superhuman powers. Yeah. But I mean, they don't have any sense of um, the entities that move. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is an entity that was dangerous in the mm -hmm. past. I think now it's gonna move that way. It's an incredibly uh, amazing, like, computer power result. Like they, they know what to do in every possible situation. Kind of brute mm -hmm. force approach. Mm -hmm. But they're not human. That's not. That is one of the things no. that makes us human: is that ability to identify, yes. learn from, and continue, and also have an emotive yes. establishment with the. Yes, emotions are very important. It drives nearly everything, and then, and then we, we gener a generalization among tasks. This is very important. So you change something, and you are able to reuse nearly everything mm -hmm. because you've learned a lot of of those situations like granularly of the entities that compose it and that interact with it, not like on a, on a whole image basis. Yeah. Um, and uh, pff, there's, a, there's a big path still to, to make like, it's, it's amazing these results. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but they, they kind of overfit the task. So it's like, okay. like I mean, you, you put them a problem with this reward signal that I, I was explaining and, and the computer will be able to solve it, giving it amount of computing power. but. Mm -hmm. You change something and they are not able to generalize. Okay. So this is, and, and this is the key. I mean. Yeah, yeah, this definitely. Well, sp speaking of, of Elon Musk in particular, there are various views. There was an interesting talk um, recently in between uh, Jack Ma and Elon Musk in which they showed very differing viewpoints as toward what AI was going to do for <laughs> us. Um, do you, how do you view AI? How do you view its continued impact on the world because we've we've had such a quick technological acceleration within the past few decades mm -hmm. and we look like we're looking at another yes. extremely quick uh, acceleration how do you see ai's role within that that's yeah. a very broad it's, question yeah, i'm sorry to say, no, but, um, goes from everything from studying seismology yeah. to figure out whether there's nuclear attacks to mm. our smartphones helping us shop yeah so is that a control factor? Is that a wow factor? Is that a positive? Do we have to wait and see? Um, it's, it's difficult to answer because, as you say, you, it touches so many fields and it's going to be specialized. So everyone will find its constraint problem and overfit mm -hmm. its training algorithm to try to solve it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be driven by, by um, sadly, sadly, it's going to yeah. be driven by productivity at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so th th this is this is sad because because uh, uh, international companies want to make more profit, <laughs> mm -hmm. but at some point I guess some particular uh, like uh, non-profit organizations will will also dedicate it to to improve no, our link, mm -hmm. and um, it's going to take time. I think we are going to see a big revolution in in 
understanding image, uh, what okay. we perceive, uh, the visual understanding that is already been applied in autonomous driving cars. Mm -hmm. um, the neural networks and um, with with many layers that are called these deep neural networks mm -hmm. are being like um, really really good at uh, understanding images and, and sound and mm -hmm. audio as well. So well, I expect a, a big change in 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 a lot of of tasks that uh, also then apply to robotics that we will be seeing. A, a big change, but it will take time, eh? mm -hmm. because every. But how much time? I mean, so every kind of interest party yeah. <laughs> will need to take its problem. They were doing it some somehow, some mm -hmm. in a way, and they will need to specify this problem in this new framework language mm -hmm. and or and train the network to to overfit that problem and and make it able to do it better than before. Okay. Than, than before. So, so we need to ignore our competitive nature to come together so that we can teach the yes, machines to, yes. <laughs> to not be like us. Yeah. <laughs> no, in that task. So in that way, if you, you offer that task, you don't have to, to do it so well. Mm -hmm. So you can, the machine can, it's a bit like uh, yeah, the, the industrialization, but on a smaller scale. And mm -hmm. I think all the interested parties will like train their, their artificial intelligences somehow in the future, but it will, well, it depends. Uh, we've seen an acceleration, maybe, maybe it will not take so many years. But yeah, we'll but see. It'll probably be upon us before we actually know it. Mm, yeah. And only intelligent people like you will know about it. No. And I'll have to come ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> well, no, thank no. you so much. This has been, I, there are yeah. so many more questions Thanks I want to, to ask you, to but you for the unfortunately invitation. we're out of time. I'm sorry if I talk too much. No, it's, it's okay. fascinating. Okay. Be, before we go, do you think we could just have a, can this well, guy maybe the, stand the, up for the, us? Or? The now robot right now, as I'm not, uh, and he's not in the theatronic system, <laughs> can only like perform some autonomous simple behaviors that uh, came within the the, the company uh, features. All right, all right. So he's distracted. Uh, like, now his uh, eyes turn red, so meaning that he he's recognizing a, a face. Okay. Does he know he's on TV? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to tell him more about it next time. Yes. Professor, thank you so yes. much for your time. I really appreciate it. No, thanks uh, to you for the invitation, really, and for being in the show. That's all for this evening. Join us again next week for more TDM Talk Show. Good night.